So today I'm going to talk about the quantum entropy of BMP V black holes. Uh, this work was done in collaboration with my PhD supervisor Samir and with Rajesh Gupta, who many of you met at King's, who's doing a postdoc at King's and is currently lecturing at IIT Roper. Okay, this work is based on the following archive article that's written on the slide for you. And um, if you want more details, please ask me or have a look at the paper. Okay, so before I begin, I just want to say a big thanks to uh, you guys for asking me to come back and um, it's really nice and I'm really looking forward to seeing everyone uh, in person. Um, okay, so BMPV black holes are spinning five-dimensional supersymmetric black holes, okay? So let me begin with giving you a quick overview of the plan. So the plan for this video is to introduce uh, the problem of BMPV black holes and their entropy and what that means um, in particular, and what are different ways of looking at entropy of black holes. Um, and then I'm just going to skip section two, go straight to section three and write down the result we obtained at the end of my PhD after many years uh, for the entropy of the BMPV black holes. Okay, in section two, I will cover it in the live session where we'll talk about some of the puzzles we encountered along the way, such as um, what should the 5D off-shell supergravity uh, action be and uh, the relationship between the 5D and 4D black holes and their entropy at even the semi-classical level. Um, all of these puzzles we looked at during PhD and got sidetracked into, but let me just tell you first what the entropy of black holes are and then write down the entropy of the BMPV black hole. Okay, so starting from the 60s and 70s, um, although I'm sure you've all seen it before, um, we had a Beckenstein and Hawking write down a very pioneering formula for the entropy of black holes. Okay, so the entropy of a black hole is given by Boltzmann constant divided by four times the area of the event horizon of the black hole divided by L Planck square. Okay, now this formula, as you can see, involves all of the universal constants. It's got G, it's got H bar, it's got C cube, and it's got uh, the Boltzmann constants. That's pretty interesting. So. Uh, it has gravity, relativity, and uh, quantum mechanics all playing a part. Um, and in particular, this formula was obtained by looking at uh, a quantum field interacting with a classical black hole. Okay, so this raises a question. Uh, can we write down the entropy as the logarithm of the microstates of the black hole? Well, it turns out for extremal black holes, we can um, the reason extremal black holes are special uh, is because so they're defining properties that their uh, horizons coincide and as a result their hogging temperature vanishes um, which means that they don't radiate and they can be treated as isolated systems and therefore this question is well defined for extremal black holes. Okay so the first result the Sturminger and Waffer result was the first microscopic result for BMPV black holes. Um, it was by, done considering extended supergravity by considering the degeneracy, degeneracy of D brain configurations in type 2b string theory compactified on K3 times S1. Now, the Sturminger and Waffer result agreed with the semi classical entropy from Beckenstein and Hawking, but it also included some interesting corrections of the form written down in formula trees. There's some log terms and some one over a terms as well. Now, similarly, there ex exists a conjecture um, by DGNV, so Dijkhoff, Kukov, Nitzke and Waffe, for the entropy of BMPV black holes for five dimensional equal to, to supergravity. And um, this comes from considering uh, topological M theory compactified on a general Calabia tree manifold. Okay. So this DGNV conjecture is kind of what we were looking at, uh, but in a slightly different way. So our approach is to actually look at sense quantum entropy function. Okay, so the quantum entropy function of SEN uh, is a conjecture that the quantum entropy of the black hole, so by quantum entropy, I mean, it should include all of these corrections in it, uh, is given by the expectation value of a Wilson line inserted at the boundary of uh, extremal black holes. So in particular, extremal black holes uh, have a near horizon geometry that includes an ADS2 factor in it, okay? So this 
the Wilson line, so the, the formula that you have here is a partition function giving you the exponential of the quantum entropy, and it's equal to the this angular brackets uh, indicate a path integral over all field configurations times the exponential of a Wilson line, and this integral, so the subscript ADS2, uh, refers to the fact that you need to take the integral over all ADS2, Euclidean ADS2 configurations, um, and finite refers to the fact that we use holographic renormalization um, to write down a finite integral. Okay, so you subtract away an infinite volume from the ADS2 factor. Okay, um, now that formula is a bit complicated. So the way to approach this for us was to look at it uh, using supersymmetric localization. So the process of supersymmetric localization essentially takes uh, functional integrals over all field configurations, so a very large path integral, and um, localizes it to a finite integral over configurations um, which preserve some supercharge Q. Okay, so that's what's called supersymmetric localization. So our black holes, uh, BMPV black holes, are supersymmetric. Um, there's a supercharge um, that we use for localization, and I won't give the details here, but essentially using this, we can reduce this integral, this finite, this functional integral, to a finite integral that um, this, so this, this work was first done in the four-dimensional case by uh, De Boker, Gomes, and Murthy. They showed that the entropy function can be just written down as an integral over uh, what's the localization manifold, so solutions to Q of fields equal zero, um, times the exponential uh, of the action evaluated on the localization manifold. Here, Q is the charge of the black hole, J is the angular momentum of the black hole. And in addition, you get a Z1 loop determinant uh, one kind of one loop determinant factor arising during the localization process that you need to calculate as well. Okay, so our integral now consists of three formula, three three steps. We need to figure out what the localization manifold is. We need to evaluate the action um, on the localization manifold, and then we need to figure out what the one loop determinant is on this. Okay, so um, this action is the renormalized action of off-shell supergravity um, for our theory. So in four dimensions, there was quite a bit of work done by the, on this already by uh, De Volker, Combs, Murthy, later Gupta and Murthy, uh, and many, many, many more names. Okay, so in four dimensions, they found the localization manifold, they calculated the one-loop determinant, they evaluated the action, and they were able to write down what the quantum entropy is, and it actually matches uh, with the string theory results, so it reproduces the Bekenstein Hawking entropy, but then also extends uh, it to give the exact same uh, corrections as the string theory result. Okay, so what do we do? So <laughs> we look at this, but in five dimensions instead, uh, we look at our BMPV supersymmetric spinning black holes instead. Okay, so we need to work again in an off shell theory. Our action needs to be off shell for localization. So the framework we use is n equal to 2 t equals 5 off shell supergravity coupled to nv plus 1 vector multiplets. Okay, so that's our framework. Um, and we'll talk more about that and BMPV black holes in the live lecture. Uh, now I'm just going to skip ahead, skip all of this, and just give you the result. So the quantum entropy function that we found or we obtained can be written down as a, an integral over these localization fields. Um, so how many fields do we have? We have uh, i running from 0 to nv plus 1. nv is the number of vector multiplets in the on-shell theory. nv plus 1 is the number of vector multiplets in the off-shell uh, theory. And the 0 represents a fluctuation in the while multiplet. Um, so that's our fluctuating field. Um, the action we evaluated and is given by 13 here. And the Z1 loop determinant I'll talk about on the next slide. So the action, let me just tell you a bit about its form. So here you have um, a Legendre transform of the following two kind of functions appearing. So uh, here C of phi is um, the C here is just represents C i j k phi i times phi j times phi k. C i j k is a symmetric tensor of 5D theory 
um, it's the intersection numbers of the Calabio manifold. Okay, it governs the second derivative action in 5t, in t equals 5n equals 2 supergravity. In addition, you have this extra term with the pi over ci phi i, 2 or 1 plus phi naught squared term. The ci's are the second churn class of the Calabio, and they govern the higher derivative action in the 5d n equals 2 supergravity theory. Okay, so this is the form of your action. C, uh, cijk and ci here uh, are both parameters on the actual Calabio that you're working on, of the actual Calabio that you're working on. Um, and the last thing is the z loop, one loop. Uh, so the one-loop determinant we found by looking at leading, leading logarithmic corrections to our entropy formula here. Um, the form of the Z1-loop was we have in the case that the angular momentum of the black hole is zero, uh, we get back just some arbit some function uh, of phi naught. Again, phi naught is the fluctuation of the while multiplet, okay, and the localization field on the while multiplet. Uh, and if j is not zero, we get an additional factor of c of phi here. Okay, the c i j k phi i j, sorry, phi times i, phi j phi k. Okay, so that's our one loop determinant. Okay, so here f of phi naught is some uh, scale independent function of phi naught. So we looked at the leading logarithmic uh, corrections uh, in order to get z one loop, which required us to use some scale dip, some scaling uh, arguments and as a result we weren't able to specify the exact form of f phi naught um, and this is still something that it needs to be resolved. Okay so why all of this is very exciting um, is because well first of all we actually went ahead and evaluated the quantum entropy function for a particular model and um, so we set the higher derivative coupling to be zero so that's the ci and um, the function f of phi naught we fixed to a particular form that simplified the integral and we fixed the number of physical vector multiplets to two and the components of the symmetric tensor such that c of phi uh, reduces to just phi one times phi two times phi three this is actually the stu model um, where except the fact that f of phi naught we had to specify as well in a particular form okay so the result that we found by actually evaluating the quantum entropy function here um, was a sum of uh, Bessel functions which was, is characteristic of the microscopic behavior um, so that, that's a sign that we're in the, on the right track. Um, our result completely agrees with uh, the DGNV conjecture in the case of static black holes so when j is equal to zero and it also extends it to include higher derivative terms. Okay, so the term depending on ci that you saw here was not present in the uh, DGNV, however we get that uh, extension. Um, for spinning black holes, we found that our result actually differs from the DGNV um, at the level of first quantum corrections. Okay, however our result um, agrees with, uh, by reducing our black hole in four four dimensions, it agrees with the results uh, found um, by Samir and Gomes and, Worth and uh, friends. Okay, so now what we'd like to do in the future is to fix the form of the one loop determinant, so this function f of phi naught exactly, and after that we'd like to solve the quantum entropy formula for different types of uh, models uh, and actually give predictions for the microscopic theory compactified on a general Calabia 3 manifold as well. All right, that's everything for me. Thanks very much.